seem to be at work decoding visual images, images that people take in and store in their brain, and even images that they can imagine? That's right. So uh, we know a great deal about the visual system, but from both animal studies and human studies. So it's a great test bed to look at just how much information can we squeeze out from the brain using these non-invasive methods, and uh, how detailed can, of a picture can we get of what people are either seeing, uh, paying attention to, or even imagining. And so uh, that's what my lab's pushing towards to try to understand how visual thoughts are represented in the brain. And uh, in, in one of our early studies, if I can uh, go to my uh, first slide, what we did here was uh, we tried to figure out whether we could read out what orientations a person's seeing, uh, what's vertical, what's horizontal, uh, what is a different tilt. It is the most basic feature that's represented in the visual system. It's the way you see the outline of a bottle, the, uh, the, the lines of the face. It is the, the most basic unit by which we represent visual information in the cortex. And uh, if we can understand how to read that out, we can get a lot of information potentially out from the brain. So what pattern recognition can do, I was just at, the, uh, at MoMA today and I was looking at some Jackson Pollock paintings. So if you have uh, an array of, all the array of different colors represent neurons that like different orientations, uh, in any given patch, maybe of just slightly more black than white paint in the patch next to it, more uh, uh, a different proportion. By applying pattern recognition, we can read out uh, what orientation uh, a person's seeing with, let's say, 95% uh, accuracy, really high accuracy for which of two orientations a person's seeing. Um, are you looking at the same sorts of pictures that John Dillon looks at? These are pictures of, you know, oxygenation of cells? It's, it's an earlier part of the brain that represents this more basic information. Uh, but let me step forward. So it's, it's interesting that we can read out the orientation, which only exists at a fine scale, even though we're measuring these coarse scale patterns. Um, uh, but what we wanted to next test is, I call that an example of brain reading. We're just reading out what the person's seeing, that's kind of cool, but I could also just look over the person's shoulder and say, oh, they're looking at uh, this pattern rather than that pattern. Um, so you know how their brain lights up when they look at a cat. Exactly, and, and decoding a cat from a dog it, from visual cortex could be easier to do than this angle of lines versus this angle, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a hard test case. But what we'd like to know is whether we can read out what a person's paying attention to. This is an example of reading out something about mental thought and tension. So in this case, if we ask people to pay attention to uh, the white set of lines or the black set of lines, we can read out what orientation they're paying attention to uh, with high accuracy, not just uh, what they're seeing, um, suggesting that uh, we can read out something about the person's uh, attentional state or, or what, what is it they're focusing on. Um, other groups have uh, further focused on uh, what it is uh, how far can we push this technique if we make use of the fact that these different global patterns on the retina lead to different activations in the visual cortex? So in this study, uh, it, it gets a little complicated, but essentially every little spot in your visual cortex responds to a different part of the visual field. And if you present, let's say, a thousand or two thousand different pictures, just say random pictures selected from Google, uh, each of those will create a unique pattern of activity in your brain. And what this group showed uh, was that they could based on these activation patterns, predict uh, novel pictures that the person saw. So uh, at test, they showed 120 different pictures, and they could correctly predict which picture the subject was seeing 110 times, so with a really, really high accuracy. And what you see um, in the, uh, the, the sort of scatter plot there, uh, where there's that sharp red along the diagonal, is uh, their ability to predict the, the correct image. Um, so along the, the one axis would be uh, the image that they saw and along the other axis is the predicted image. And the fact that everything falls on that diagonal means that they're, they're getting it right most of the time.